Welcome back everybody to Equipper Central Coast. We're so excited for you to be with us, whether it's online or in person here at the Estuary. Um, I have a few announcements for us, like always. So let's go down through that list, yeah? Dream Sunday, that's gonna be November 22nd, 10 a.m., Thousand Hills Ranch. And um, remember, we're gonna be through the fast by then. So there's gonna be barbecue after, come over, hang out, you know, invite your friends and your neighbors um, and um, come out and have a good time. Equippers at Home, that's gonna be November 29th. Uh, we're only gonna have an online service, so get some of your closest friends and neighbors, maybe your local barista, your cats, your dogs, tune in for the service. Um, so just make sure to not show up to the estuary November 29th. There's gonna be a kids art class with Emily Wessler down at the kids section, um, and that's gonna be on November 18th at 4 p.m. at the kids space. Equippers Moms, uh, remember, that's going to be Thursdays, 9 a.m. at the Kids Space. Men's Fellowship, that's going to be 6.30 a.m. on Tuesday mornings at the Estuary. To get connected, make sure to visit equipercc.com slash connect. Uh, for prayer, visit equipercc.com slash prayer. To give, equipercc.com slash give. Let's get ready for an awesome word from Pastor John Sparrow. Well, welcome and good morning again. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Whatever day it is, whatever time it is, wherever you find yourself, thanks for tuning into this message. Uh, we believe that it's going to encourage you, it's going to inspire you, and it's going to equip you for life. And uh, I'm filming this on Wednesday, uh, November 11th, which is Veterans Day. So I just want to give a huge thank you and honor to all the veterans that are tuning in today and call Equippers Church their home. Uh, we have no clue, those of us who ser haven't served in the military have no clue uh, the sacrifices really required for our nation's freedom. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of our heart, this team here, uh, for your sacrifice uh, for our freedom. And uh, if you're watching this, make sure to thank a veteran, uh, really our nation's heroes. But um, the title of my message today is Look Again. Look again, look again. Um, and it's based off of one of the devotionals from the fast this week that went out, I believe, on Tuesday morning. And uh, the, the subject is really simple, uh, yet it's the most powerful truth. And I want to expound on the hope we have in Jesus. It's real simple. And I don't know where you find yourself tuning in today. I, I don't know if you're on a mountaintop or you're in the depth of a valley. I don't know if your marriage is thriving or it's falling apart. I don't know if your business is booming or you had to close your doors recently. I don't know if you are feeling overwhelming joy or fighting crippling depression and anxiety. Wherever you find yourself today, I, I, I believe that as we talk through the hope we have in Jesus, that you'll be encouraged and inspired today uh, to keep pressing in, to stay in faith. And um, I, I really hope today uh, that we can see a bigger picture than just the election happening in the United States. I know it's taking up a lot of the time and attention, and it is important, and we want uh, integrity in our democracy, in the way that elections are decided, but I I'm really not speaking into that today. Uh, this is really so much bigger than that. And, uh, you know, as a pastor, I have the unique opportunity of doing life on life with people on a daily basis that um, that are struggling in some sense, that... Um, we get to rejoice with those who rejoice, but we also mourn with those who mourn. And so, you know, on a regular basis, I, I, I talk to people who, you know, marriage is literally in the balance and had just gotten a bad diagnosis and uh, are suffering significant loss and addiction. And so I, I just want to make sure that in our talking about Jesus and the hope we have in him, that we can really see the big picture, the hope that he offers um, beyond just our election, uh, even though that does matter. Um, it's beyond that. And I love Acts chapter 12, I believe it's verse 24. There's this political drama happening in Jerusalem where Herod is, you know, gets eaten by worms and he goes away and, you know, it's, a, it's an upheaval in the nation and, and things are in the balance. And, and uh, in verse 12, 24, it says, nevertheless, uh, the word of God continued to spread and to flourish. And so we're, we're in the nevertheless, we're in the meanwhile sort of space here and now matter what's happening in the nation. We just believe that meanwhile, uh, the word of God is continuing to grow, flourish, and spread. Our key passage of scripture today uh, is gonna be Colossians 1, verses 15 through 20. I'm gonna read that scripture. I'm gonna pray. Uh, I'm gonna expound on that a little bit and talk on 
the subject of our hope in Jesus. And then uh, we'll pray at the end. And uh, we're actually going to do a little bit of worship at the end of the message today. So make sure to stay tuned in to sing along with us at the end. Um, this is Colossians 1. 15 through 20, it says this, he is the image, speaking of Jesus and the supremacy of Jesus, says this, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him, all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that brings your word to life, that illuminates truth in our hearts. And we ask, God, that today you would lead us into that truth that brings freedom, that you would encourage us by your spirit. We thank you for what you are doing in our church, in our community, in our state, in our nation. We believe that you're on the throne, that you see the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. And today we choose to trust you. And uh, for anyone who's tuning in today that is deeply discouraged, we ask that the God of all hope would comfort you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Um, I don't know if you caught the news the other day, but um, some parts of this election process I I just have to laugh at. You know, I think we can find some humor in some of the things that are going on. One of the funniest things that I had observed just glancing at the news as of late was the press conference that happened the other day with Rudy Giuliani. He was part of, you know, Trump's team had a press conference and Saturday morning, uh, Donald Trump posted a tweet that said, press conference at the Four Seasons Philadelphia thinking that that was a, you know, swanky downtown hotel in Philadelphia. Turns out, if you saw this, that the press conference is actually hold, held at Four Seasons Total Landscaping. It's a mom and pop brick and mortar landscaping shop in the northeastern side of Philadelphia that is in close proximity to, uh, you know, crematory and uh, uh, an adult film shop and, and a jail, you know, it was, in this, it was in the back parking lot and, you know, there's Rudy Giuliani in front of this garage door in the back of a landscaping business that was also called the Four Seasons. And so, you know, the reality is sometimes things don't always turn out the way they appear or sound. Four Seasons had a dual meaning in that case. And, and I remember a few years ago as a church, we were looking for a, a portable baptismal because we have been a mobile church for a while and you know we want to baptize people. So uh, one of our friends sent us a link to this online store that had an inflatable hot tub. And uh, it set up quick, the water actually heated up and uh, we were using it for a baptismal, but if we wanted to, we could turn the jets on. You know, it was a pretty sweet setup and it was on a killer sale. So we said, let's do it. It's gonna work great for baptizing people. And so we ordered it. And a long time went by, weeks went by, and then a package showed up at the church and uh, we opened it and it was about a three foot in diameter pink children's inflatable pool. It, it, it was about the size of this table and pink and about that thick. And, and, and so sometimes things don't always turn out the way they appear. And uh, I, I think uh, this is so true for our, our walk with Jesus and our Christian faith. You know, maybe it's not an inflatable pool or a press conference. Maybe it's like you, you've prayed and prayed and prayed and you've built up this confident expectation of God to do something to come through in your life. And then the way that he answers your prayer is different than the way you asked your prayer. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, that God answers you differently than you ask. And I I think we've all come across moments like this in our lives. And maybe you're in a moment like this in your life right now where you look around and you say, how the heck did this pack, how did did I end up with this package? (laughs) Like this isn't, this isn't what I ordered, but this is what I received. And so this can be a beautiful thing as well when you think about all the things that God has spared us from, you know, like the relationship that didn't work out and, you know, the things that didn't go according to plan that in hindsight you realize was just God looking after us. He was protecting us and um, the outcome was different than expected, but 
I want to take us back to a specific scripture in Colossians that we just read and, and stir our faith a little bit for the, the moment we're living in. In Colossians 1.17, again, it says this, He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. In other words, God holds everything together. I want that to just sink in. It's simple but so profound. God holds everything together. Uh, a different word or phrase that I'm going to touch on briefly that, that is a big mystery in our Christian walk and our faith is uh, another term for a mis-expectation might be unanswered prayer. And I, I want to take a few minutes specifically to talk about unanswered prayer and specifically with three well-known passages of scripture, which would be well known, known among those who have walked with Jesus for any amount of time, three specific passages of scripture that I believe are profound. And I always pray, you know, maybe you've heard things over and over. It might not be new to you, but I, I trust that God would do something new in you as you hear these passages of scripture. And, and I, I want to communicate today that we have a hope in Christ. And even if things don't go according to our plan, his plan is, is bigger. His plan is more grand. It's actually to prosper us. It's for our good. And so we have hope in Jesus. And so Luke 18, one says this, Jesus told them a parable to the effect they ought to always pray and not lose heart. So Jesus is before his disciples and we hear this, always pray. And I want to tell you right now, always pray. Like pray for the parking lot, pray for the Christmas gift, pray for the election, pray for wars, like pray for things that are seemingly important, seemingly unimportant, whatever it is, the encouragement through scripture, not just from Jesus, but from Paul also is to pray continually. Always pray, like make your requests known to God, pray about everything and, and, and always be praying. But Jesus adds this phrase and he says, don't lose heart, don't lose heart. And then he continues in this parable telling of this, it's called the parable of the persistent widow. And there's this judge uh, who has ruled against her favor uh, according to her plan. And she stays, she's just, I gotta say, she's annoying enough to change the verdict. She's so persistent and she bugs this judge so much that at some point he says that he would change his mind and give the widow what she wanted because she was so persistent. And, uh, and it wraps up like this in Luke 18, 7 through 8 says, it will not God give justice to his elect who cried to him day and night. Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. And catch this, catch this. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Look, I, I want to be real clear that God is going to vindicate his people. If you are a Jesus follower, you have to understand the big picture is that God vindicates you, that he will perform on your behalf, and, and he'll do it speedily, it, it says in that scripture. He'll do it speedily, but as I began to study this passage of scripture, scholars kind of pick apart that term speedily in context of scripture because scripture always interprets scripture. And so we look at speedily and where it's used elsewhere in the concept of God's time and we realize that speedily to God is not speedily to us. Behold, I'm coming soon, thousands of years later. And then other, other place in scripture it says, you know, a day in God's courts is like a thousand elsewhere. So his time frame is so different and so far removed from our finite experience and time frame. And so when it says he'll do it speedily, uh, we really have no clue the time and the means in which he'll answer our requests. We will be vindicated, but the answer and the timing may turn out different than we expected, which is why the passage, the parable wraps up like this. When the son of man comes, will he find faith? Jesus is saying, when I come back, will I find faith here? He's distinguishing those who have faith and those who don't by those who have the ability to trust him, his timing, his method, his way. So pray to God about everything always, continually, but don't get too connected to the results of your prayers. You gotta hear me out on this, that the whole goal is to trust God, not to trust an outcome. Will he come, when he comes back, will he find people that trust him regardless of the timing and the outcome. Continuing, continuing on, you gotta hang, hang with me here. We're going somewhere. We're gonna go to Ephesians 3.20, another well-known passage of scripture that I love. It says this, this is Paul to the, to the church of Ephesus. He's saying this, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more 
than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory. To do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. What this, this scripture tells us is yes, it affirms the idea that we do ask. We keep asking. We stay persistent in our asking. We, we stay persistent in making our requests known to God and petitioning heaven. Yes, we stay persistent in that way. But what it also tells us is that at the end of our prayer, we can stop and we can almost be like, you know what, God? Like, forget all I just said. <laughs> like, I, I just want to know, comprehend, understand, and see the immeasurably more that you have in mind. Because God will answer in bigger and better ways, but his definition of bigger and better might be different. So keep praying, keep believing, but at the end of those prayers and declarations and confessions, understand that he will outperform our flesh day in and day out. He will, he, will, he will go beyond our expectation day in and day out. And you know what? There's things that we are to pray for that we can't even comprehend how to pray. There's things and desires and outcomes and destiny attached to our lives that we don't even understand how to pray. So we have this hope in Jesus when we don't know what to pray. And when the outcome is looking a little bit different, we have this hope and this reality that, that he can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine because it's according to his power that's at work in me and in you. And it's always important to remember that God always has bigger and better plan, but he may define bigger and better a little bit differently than we do. And, and lastly, an, another well-known passage of scripture, Romans 8, 28. If you've never heard this, uh, put it in the, take it to the bank. <laughs> Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Look, this, this scripture helps us so much when we're facing unanswered prayers. Because I want to be very clear. We, we don't believe that God blatantly causes evil. It's actually his, his desire to, to overcome evil with his goodness. It's like Jesus came to overcome evil. And so he's not going to cause evil and be counter to his mission. But what this scripture does mean, my favorite interpretation, is this, that God is so good that he can win with any hand. Let me say that again. God is so good that he can win with any hand. Whatever you, prayer went unanswered, God's turning it around for good. Whatever expectation was missed, God is working it out for our good. God is so good that even what didn't happen in our lives and, and didn't manifest in our lives and didn't come through and didn't work out, didn't pan out, whatever that didn't happen in our lives, God's so good that he's still working those things out for good in our lives because we love him and we're called according to his purpose. He's that good, Romans eight twenty eight. We see the ultimate example of, of this in Jesus Christ, and he's at the Mount of Olives, and we read about this in Luke chapter 22. The Mount of Olives was a place of crushing, and it was a place of crushing not just in the natural, where they turned olives into oil, but it was a place of crushing for Jesus this one particular evening. He, he, he's there uh, uh, praying before his father, and he asks this in Luke 22, 42 through 43, Father, if you're willing... Take this cup from me. What's the cup? The cup is the suffering that Jesus was about to endure. The cup was the being beaten, bloodied, and bruised, and humiliated, hung on a cross. This was the cup of suffering that Jesus was about to drink. And in his flesh, and in that moment, knowing what was to come, he petitions his father and says, man, is there another way? Is there another outcome? Is there another uh, outcome to taking this cup? And if possible... <laughs> If, if, if you're up for it, if there's another way just to avoid the pain, would, would you take this cup from me? But then I, I want us to get this. And I want you to hear this. Jesus says to his father, yet not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. So we see this exemplified in Jesus. We have our hope. We have our expectation. And we never give up in our prayer and our declaration and believing for God's best in our lives. We never give up. We never grow weary. We, we, we never lose heart, as Jesus just said. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we understand that not my will, but your will be done. And it may pan out a little bit differently than we expected. And, and I, I want to bring faith to you today 
in this. I'm not trying to take away from our faith. Again, I'm trying to add to your faith that our faith is never in an outcome. It's in a person who is Jesus. And I love this. And this is where we're going to wrap things up. In verse 43, it says this, after this declaration, not my will, but your will be done and letting go hands open, like whatever the outcome is, I believe that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly more than ever I, I could ask, think, or imagine. I believe that God works all things together for good for those who are called according to his purposes. And I, I, I take heart. And, and then we see this, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. <laughs> so where do we find the grace? Where do we find the strength? Where do we find the endurance? that's needed. Not my will, but your will's your will be done. Angel of the Lord appears and strengthens Jesus in that moment. And I want to wrap this this up with a story from the Old Testament from the book of 2 Kings chapter 6 about a man named Elisha. Elisha uh, received the ministry from Elijah. He was a man of God, he was a prophet, and he worked on, on behalf of God's chosen people. And because he worked on behalf of God's chosen people, he had some enemies. People weren't up for God working on their behalf because it, it, it meant destruction on rival armies and nations. And so he, he had a, a bounty, if you will. People were looking for his head. And, and so the enemy actually got some intel one day on, on Elisha's whereabouts. They, they discovered where he was. And it turns out in this moment, Elisha was alone with his servant. So there was two of them. And what happens is Elisha wakes up one morning next to a servant and they look out and they see that they're surrounded by chariots and armies. They, they are completely surrounded. And, and, and Elisha's servant's like, what the heck's going on? It, this was, he was new to the job. If you read the chapter before, like this servant was new to the job and he looks around and they're completely surrounded. And he counts how many there are. And, and Elisha makes this declaration of faith, like there's more that are with us than those who are against us. And his servant's like, yeah, right. Like I'm counting one, two. And then, and then Elisha says something so powerful. He, he prayed in 2 Kings 6, 17. Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. They were horses and chariots of fire, meaning supernatural. That they were hosts of heaven, that they were angelic, that these were, this was an army that God had sent to surround what was surrounding Elisha and his servant. And, and I just believe that God wants to open your eyes today. He wants you to look again. He wants you to look with fresh eyes. It, it, you, you thought you're fighting alone. You thought you are standing alone in this battle, but you are going to look up and see that you're actually surrounded on every side, not by the enemy, but surrounded by your great God. You're surrounded by your great God. And Psalm 121, one through three says this, I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. You may be surrounded by troubles. You may be surrounded by pressures. You may be walking in the greatest season of unanswered prayer that you've ever walked in before. But I want you to understand that what you can't see with your physical eyes is that the most high God is surrounding what's surrounding you. And that's really good news. And, and I just believe that God pulled back the curtain right now for us to see beyond what we can see with our physical eyes, what we'd see powerful angels at work on our behalf. That they're standing guard, protecting you. And just as they came to Jesus to strengthen him, they're, they're, they're strengthening you. They're pushing back the forces of darkness. You would see God moving the wrong people out of the way, lining up things in your favor, arranging good breaks, healing and deliverance. And my prayer today is that God would open your eyes as you choose to look again. As you revisit the things that didn't go according to plan, as you ponder the things that seem unanswered, would we look again and see with fresh eyes that maybe what we thought was a setback was actually a setup. Maybe what we thought was an outcome of evil, God was turning that all around for good. And maybe what we defined as better and best, God had a far different definition according to his power. And so my prayer is that God would open your eyes today. And I, I wanna pray for some people as we wrap up. I think one of the most beautiful things about uh, the servant and Elisha is a lot of times we can take on like the, you know, there's a lot of prophetic stuff like you have 
if this may be total jargon to you, but like you have an Elijah anointing or Elisha and Moses and, you know, we get attributed to these characters of faith, you know, these people of faith. Well, I, I believe in a whole, wholeheartedly that we can, you know, take on this sort of posture that we've seen in the past of people. But what I want to say today is that I, I, I'm not Elisha in this story, I'm the servant. <laughs> I'm the, I'm the servant in this story most days. And maybe you're the servant in this story today. And what I want you to understand, it's not you alone that has the power to transform your future and get all this faith and muster up a new future. It's who you're associated with because what we now realize, according to John 15, that, that Jesus no longer calls us servants, but he calls us friends. And so we are associated with Jesus and by what he accomplished on the cross, our sin and shame once separated us from God the Father, but Jesus made a way through his sacrifice, by his confession of not my will, but your will be done. By that declaration and going to the cross, he made a way that we could be associated to come near to God who is holy and is perfect and is the God of angel armies. And now we stand associated with him in relationship and we can be confident that he is the provider. He's the way maker. He's the one who provides a new future and a hope. He's the one who takes away our sin. He's the way who takes one who takes away our shame. He's the one who does what scripture says he's gonna do, that he would take a heart of stone and turn it to flesh. We're the, we're, we're the servant standing amongst greatness and he's welcomed us into this new reality to see things with a totally different perspective. He's been so gracious to welcome us into that reality. And so today, I, I, I don't know where you're at. I don't know what pain you're facing, but what I do know the only way forward is with a relationship to Jesus. To walk with him, to, to get his new life in exchange for your old life. And so before I go any further, I wanna extend an invitation for anybody today that wants to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, to, to, to acknowledge him as Lord and Savior, to acknowledge the sacrifice that he paid on your behalf, that you could walk in righteousness and wholeness and no longer a slave to your sin. And so if, if that's you, if you wanna make that decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I'm gonna say a really simple prayer. We believe that it's a really easy way into relationship with God according to Romans 10. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you'll be born again. So I'm gonna pray a simple prayer, but if that's you, maybe just in an act of faith in your car, in your living room, amongst family, friends, maybe just in your bed listening to this at nighttime, if you would just lift a hand and acknowledge before God and whoever you're with that you're making a decision today, you're responding to the gospel of Jesus, that you want him to take what was old and make it new in your life and to be associated with the God of angel armies through what he's accomplished on your behalf. So would you pray this simple prayer with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins. Today I repent. I simply turn towards you and receive your grace. I receive your forgiveness and today I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I trust you with my past, I trust you with my present, and God, I look to you for my future. Thank you that in you all things are made new. In Jesus' name, amen. So we believe that if you acknowledge God and you pray that prayer in your heart with sincerity that you have walked into a new reality. And everything on the outside might not be different, but I, I promise you that God started a mighty work on the inside of you. And when we give God an inch, he, he's so faithful to take a mile and transform our lives in the most beautiful sort of way. And just as, as we wrap up, we're gonna end singing a song and in and, and, and worship. And I just wanna remind you that it may seem like, you know, there's, there's so such an overwhelming reality surrounding you, but I just want you to get perspective to see what's really surrounding you. It's, it's God, it's His goodness, it's, per, it's provision, and where you've experienced um, some sort of disappointment, disillusionment, unanswered prayers, a lot of mystery that you may be walking through. I just want to affirm today that He who started a good work in you is faithful to complete it, that His will is perfect, it's good, it's bigger, it's better. He's so faithful in our lives. And so I'm going to pray for you. And if, if you're experiencing kind of a greater level of, of disappointment than usually 
are, I, I just believe that God's gonna give you that sort of strength and encouragement today. So Lord, I thank you that you're the God who works on our behalf for every heart and every home that is experiencing some sort of oppression or just the result of trauma, a simple missed expectation. Uh, I just ask that you would encourage hearts today, you encourage spirits today, that you would keep us in faith to the person of Jesus Christ that we would understand the hope we have in you and we would choose today to look again, that we would look again. We would look again to see what's really surrounding us. We would look again to see who's really working everything out for good. We would look again to see who's really doing immeasurably more than we could ever ask, think, or imagine. We would look again to the one who gives us the type of strength where we don't lose heart. So God, work on behalf of your church. Strengthen your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks so much again for tuning in and being with us. Stick around for a few minutes as we enter into a time of worship. And we really hope that next Sunday, the 22nd, you join us at Thousand Hills Rants for Dream Sunday. It's gonna be followed by food and fellowship and fun. Invite your friends, your neighbors, and uh, we'll see you soon. Love you. Turn it for
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my 